This is the revolting blob, and you're watching Cold TV. Ah! <laughs> Salutations, everybody, and welcome back to Pro Wrestling 60, where we cover everything that happened in the world of professional wrestling this past week. I'm XLJ, the OG, and as you can see, unfortunately, I am not joined by my partner in crime, my brother from another mother, Mr. B-Ro, as he is currently out. He's been sick all week, unfortunately, but uh, he's doing a little bit better, but unfortunately won't be able to be joining me for this episode of Pro Wrestling 60. So I'm going to be flying solo, folks. So we wish you well, Mr. B-Roll. You're in our thoughts. But, hey, in the world of pro wrestling, things are always moving at a constant pace. And it was a super busy, another super busy week in the world of professional wrestling. So, as my good friends would say, the, the clock starts now. And for our top story this week, yes, here we go again. <laughs> CM Punk has returned. Monday Night Raw. So, obviously, we all know last week Punk made his surprise debut at the Survivor Series in Chicago. So, it was going to be interesting to see what Mr. Punk would have to say on Monday Night Raw. Uh, which, by the way, it is official that Punk, is, that is his brand, where he is going to be uh, staying, at least for now, um, during his tenure back here in the WWE, so he's assigned exclusively to the Monday Night Raw brand, so you can see him every Monday night, if you want. It's up to you entirely. Anyway, so, all this hype, all this excitement, what in the world was Punk going to say? That was what was on everybody's mind. And I gotta give kudos to the WWE, because I really thought this was going to be the opening segment of Monday Night Raw, but they saved it to the very end. And this is why they're smart about that, folks, is because literally, like my, myself and so many others, watched Raw from beginning to end, essentially, so we could see what exactly Punk was going to say. Because, I mean, this is a huge moment. I mean, we, we've talked about this for, for years, what would happen if he actually did go back. I mean, it, it was one of those things we've just built up in our minds. And boy, oh boy, did this fall flat on its face. And I feel like no matter what he would have said or done, like it probably wouldn't have lived up to everybody's hype. But yikes, this uh, promo, if you will, um, it just seemed off. And that's being nice about it. Let's call a spade a spade. It was literally felt like uh, reading a script and hitting like, like, verbal points and cues and so and whatnot it just for what punk has done throughout his career for like all these pipe bombs and stuff i think the entire world whether you're a punk fan or not was expecting so much more out of this promo and i do i will say this i think it's good that he doesn't mention anything about aew he's wanting to move on and i could totally respect that and also as well uh, contractually obligated not to say anything just like tony khan I uh, can't really say anything about the matter, nor would he. Uh, but yeah, just this felt like a repeat. There was elements and, and verbiage in this promo that was just like we heard when he came back on Rampage. Or I'm sorry, back at the, or yeah, it was Rampage at the, the uh, United Center when he made his debut in AEW, you know. It just, I don't know. It just, to me, it, and I think a lot of wrestling fans will agree, it just did not feel authentic, except for what he said straight to the camera afterwards and that sums it all up that he's not here to make friends he's there to make money so i don't know like we, we've talked about this so many times on pw60 and everybody 
in the IWC has talked about this until we're blue in the face. It's but it's here now, and we're gonna have to see. I do have an interesting like thought on this that kind of hit me later this week was, um, what if Punk is? What if this is like gonna build up to like a a heel persona? Like, he's going completely against the grain of everything that he said before, and now he's, like, become corporate punk? I don't know. It almost seems like CM Punk is now a Triple H guy? There's a hot take for you. But nonetheless, CM Punk is back in the WWE, and like we say, he is on Monday Night Raw. Well... Speaking of CM Punk, our good close personal friend Jay from Jay Knows Wrestling just so happened to be in the Nashville, Tennessee area this past week for Monday Night Raw, and he was on the prowl to find CM Punk so he could get his money back that was owed to him from over 20 plus years ago, I think, or something like that. Nonetheless, let's go to Jay and see if he has any luck locating CM Punk. Hey, hey, it's your boy Jay, bona fide member of the Dirt Sheet Press, and here we are in Nashville at Monday Night Raw looking for CM Punk to see if he'll pay me back that $6 in gas money that his best friend Colt Cabana borrowed from me all those years ago. Do we think we'll run into Punk? And furthermore, do you think he'll pay me back? So, can't find CM Punk if I can't find the venue. I still can't find the Bridgestone Arena, so hopefully I'll find it soon. I don't know. I think I might be close to CM Punk. I see some hockey stuff, but check this out. Does Effie play for the Predators? Holy shit! I found Bridgestone Arena. All right. The search for Punk continues. Also, Effie plays for the Predators. So the locker room has been found. So... The question is, will CM Punk pay me the $6 that was borrowed to his friend? I think he actually rode with. So he kind of used that gas money. But inflation, he should pay me more. But where's Punk? Because just like the UFC, Punk is also 0-2 against me. Update. Your boy Jay got an ominous message to come to the administrative entrance, but... Locked out. Will your boy Jay be able to get in to Monday Night Raw and see his old buddy, CM Punk? All right, here we go. Will the dirt sheet press pass get me in? Where's Punk at? That's that's all I'm here for. I figured figured he'd catch up after holding a Division One athlete down and making him lose every night at state fairs. That he'd want to catch up. But everybody's buses are here, so where's Punk? Oop. Bus. Bus. But no WWE buses. There's a bra even in Nashville tonight. Alright, let's try to get in and see what happens. But nothing like AEW. There are actually people here. It's your boy Jay inside the Bridgestone Arena. And still no CM Punk. But your boy Jay made it into the building. Also... Coincidentally, the Bears are on a TV that you cannot see, but whoop. So, great. When CM Punk comes out, I now have something to do. I'm so conflicted. CM Punk sucks, but I don't want to look like an AEW fan either. So what do I do? He borrowed, well, his friend borrowed almost 40 years ago. But he's here. We have found CM Punk. Turned out I just had to get in. By the way, still don't see him. Just like the UFC, this man 
is 0-2 against me. Well, guys, so far, no six dollars. CM Punk saw me and took off. Didn't even stay and pose for the fans or hug the fans, high five. Just ran away. But don't worry, your boy Jay will be doing some more investigating around the arena. Will I receive the six dollars that I lent to CM Punk's best friend? Oh, so they enough. Hey, hey, it's your boy Jay, bona fide member of the Dirt Sheet Press, and I'm still here at the Bridgestone Arena looking for CM Punk. Hoping to get that $6 that was borrowed from me almost 20 years ago. Now, as you guys saw, I thought CM Punk was not going to show up on the show, but he did appear last minute. But breaking development in the story of the search for CM Punk and the $6 that was borrowed almost 20 years ago. As I was rounding the corner, signing off, I was asked to leave by security. Now, some masked men that are constantly singing cult of personality with masks screaming something about a real world championship or following me through the streets of Nashville. Will your boy Jay make it home okay? Okay. Okay. I must retract my previous video. Um, after security asked me to leave, those masked men singing cult of personality, uh, they were just some guys that all found each other on Grindr. Uh, I do pay attention. But this is getting really confusing because, you know, if I boo CM Punk, I look like an AEW fan, which really makes me look, you know, unintelligent. But I can't cheer CM Punk because, like I said, me and the UFC have one major thing in common against us. CM Punk, oh, in two. So I'm walking by the buses. Dirt sheet news pass in hand. Hoping, just hoping somebody will give me some type of inside scoop. But nothing so far. Really thought I would have uh, got some inside information with this dirt sheet press pass. But who knows? But once again... It's your boy, Jay, signing out for the night from the Bridgestone Arena. And no CM Punk to pay me back that $6. Will this story ever end? Nobody knows. But that's all for tonight in the search for CM Punk. Tune in to PW60 next week as there will be some exclusive dirt sheet news. Oh, Jay, we love you, buddy. I'm sorry you couldn't get your $6 back from Punk. I mean, maybe he was trying to avoid you. Who knows? I, I feel like in my heart of hearts, someday it's going to happen, though, my friend. Well, hey, let's talk about the rest of Monday Night Raw. And I got to say, I thought it was a pretty solid show in all actuality. Um, of course, Punk wasn't the only turn, return. We got to see the return of the Viper, the Apex Predator himself, Randy Orton. And WWE, so like I say, I got to give him kudos. Smart that the fact that that was the opening segment, because like I said earlier, I really thought it was going to be Punk, but that crowd was red hot for Randy Orton. Randy Orton looking great too, by the way. Uh, just physically, mentally, like on the mic, just looks happy and healthy, and it's so great to see him on our screen again. And how about that moment with Rhea Ripley? Oh my gosh! And of course, ended up late, later in the night we get. Randy Orton one-on-one -on -one against Dominic Mysterio, uh, which was a very fun matchup, I thought. Uh, let's talk about the tag team gauntlet match to kick off Raw. and That was a very impressive uh, gauntlet matchup. Uh, the Creed brothers winning uh, and are now the number one contenders for the WWE tag team titles. And speaking of the tag titles, for the women's tag titles were on the line as well as Chelsea Green. And Piper Niven would successfully defend against Natalia and Tegan Knox. Uh, one of my favorite matches of the night, honestly, I have to say, I absolutely loved Ivar against Bronson Reed. That was some big meaty men slapping some meat, and I think that that feud's going to continue on for a little bit. I'm here for it. Uh, also, how about Cody Rhodes coming out announcing that he declares himself for the Royal Rumble? But we found out after weeks of hype, it appears Shinsuke Nakamura is targeting Cody Rhodes. I love that. I did. I gotta say, I didn't see it coming. 
it's not a rivalry I thought of, but like now that it's out there, I'm like, yes, I need Nakamura against Cody. That is going to be a awesome ass feud. And also, Seth Rollins come out and revealed that he will be defending his championship next week against Jey Uso and one Drew McIntyre. Did not take too kindly to that. Uh, but overall, Raw was a solid show. But a, a big surprise or fun moment of the night, Jelly Roll was in the house considering Nashville's his own. And here you can see him with the Viper. Uh, and also Jelly Roll getting a little involved in the uh, Randy Orton-Dominic Mysterio matchup. But it was pretty cool seeing him on Monday Night Raw. Raw, like I say, I thought Raw was a great show, but don't take my word for it. Once again, as you saw, Jay was there live and in color. And he's got a special Dirt Sheet News report on Monday Night Raw. So let's go back to Jay. Hey, hey, it's your boy Jay, a bona fide member of the Dirt Sheet Press. And here we are at Monday Night Raw at Bridgestone Arena. A very lackluster episode of Raw, if you like in-ring action. So if you're an AEW fan, you probably weren't watching. Which leads to the first of my very many conflicted issues I had during this episode of Raw. How am I supposed to boo for CM Punk? Because if I do, I look like an idiot that likes AEW. But then again, I also look like an idiot that likes the good part of AEW, but hates the elite. So what exactly am I to do when CM Punk comes out? I never got the $6, but that's okay. As far as in-ring action, though, like I said, the Creed Brothers, now number one contenders for the WWE Undisputed Tag Team Titles. Also, nothing else in ring really happened to affect anything other than Randy Orton looking as good as ever defeating Dominic Mysterio. But this episode of Monday Night Raw was all about the blowback of Survivor Series, both the War Games match and the surprise return of R-Truth. The night-long narrative was R-Truth looking for those award-winning jelly rolls. Turned out he found them in the Judgment Day's locker room. But it turned out another Jelly Roll was here as he was in his hometown in Nashville to check in with his probation officer. And Jelly Roll and Randy Orton happened to be across the street from this very Bridgestone Arena right now. Toss him back a couple of cold ones and they won't let anybody in, even with a dirt sheet press pass. But I was told by Randy Orton that I have a cool hat but this was a very promo heavy episode of monday night raw cody rhodes first person to declare himself for the 2024 royal rumble does this mean he'll be the number one entrant because he was the first to declare that's never happened before but why else would we not think he was gonna be in the rumble anyways Seth Rollins says he isn't going to waste any time or effort on CM Punk, but then let the crowd continue to cheer for CM Punk. Drew McIntyre is going to destroy Sami Zayn next week, and it looks like he's going to take out Jey Uso as well, so he could go after Seth Rollins as he headbutted him so hard he started bleeding. So once again, a very lackluster in-ring episode of Monday Night Raw, but promo heavy as CM Punk back in WWE praising Vincent McMahon but everybody's gonna look past that because it's CM Punk but those just aren't the facts those are the dirty facts that are cheat news (laughs) oh Jay you are a treasure my friend well, hey, let's fast forward over to Friday Night SmackDown. As uh, SmackDown I wasn't as loaded as of a show as in comparison to Raw, but hey, I mean they had a huge moment with the Punk coming with Punk coming back. But nonetheless, SmackDown was a fun show, nonetheless. Uh, kicking off with a Bianca promo that would lead to Bianca Belair going one on one against Yo Sky, uh, or I'm sorry, not Yo Sky against Kari Sane. Uh, We also got to see Bobby Lashley go one-on-one against Butch. Can we? Papa H. Papa H. 
can we just call him Pete Dunn again? Can, can we just drop the Butch thing? Because, I mean, it already seems like the Brawling Brooks are breaking up. He's kind of going off on solo, his solo career. Can we just do that, please? I, I'm not asking for much here. Uh, Santos Escobar was in action as well. Uh, Kevin Owens did return and went one-on-one -on -one against Grayson Wallow. Also, uh, Logan Paul was on Friday Night SmackDown to announce a number one contenders tournament for the United States Championship. Uh, so that'll be going down here the next coming weeks here in uh, WWE. Uh, but the big story on SmackDown was Randy Orton was on SmackDown, and he was there to address the bloodline. And we did find out uh, it was a little bit of a bidding war between Raw and SmackDown, but SmackDown would prevail as the Viper is officially part of the SmackDown roster. And here you can see he gave a little RKO to his new GM, Nick Aldis. I'm going to speak this into existence for my good friend, Nicholas. I need Aldis, Randy Orton at WrestleMania. I'm just saying. Uh, but nonetheless, Randy Orton is now on Friday nights. And like I say, man, he looks so good. Like, he looks happy and healthy, and it's just awesome that he's back in the WWE. So glad to see the Fiper. And he's on to be on Friday nights, every Friday nights on SmackDown. Uh, also this week, WWE announced that the clip of CM Punk returning at the Survivor Series was the highest viewed social media clip with 87 million views that's freaking crazy man uh and that's and that's like within a, a 24-hour time frame too i believe so love him or hate him like i say the man gets people watching and he gets your eyes and your ears and all your attention and speaking of cm punk some rumors have already bellowed out this past week of who could he possibly be facing at WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia. Well, there is a potential. But remember, folks, this is just a rumor. But the rumor is that CM Punk's opponent for WrestleMania 40 could, in fact, be the Texas Rattlesnake himself, Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean, personally, I don't know how I feel about this. Like, um, in the back of my mind, I feel like, oh, okay, this would be like, okay, we're finally going to get to see this pay playoff. Because remember when they were promoting that video game so many years ago, what was it, 2K13 or 14 or whatever the hell it was? Like they were really teasing like this matchup could happen. My thing is, is like, w would it be a sight to see, of course. But I mean, we got one match with Austin against Kevin Owens. That was fun. Do we really? Do you really want to risk it again, of like any injury or, or dare I say, stinking up the joint? I, I don't know. I, I'm indifferent on this. Me personally, I honestly think the story there is Seth Rollins. I think that's the money matchup. If it was me booking, that's what I would do. But this is a very tempting matchup. But nonetheless, this is what the IWC is going to be talking about this for. Weeks and months to come until the build-up to WrestleMania, and we get closer and closer to that day. Which, man, it's hard to believe it's already WrestleMania season. Time flies when you're having fun. And not having fun. <laughs> so, this week it was announced that there was a lawsuit of WWE going against the WWE that investors have filed challenging the promotions merger with the UFC. Uh, and it mainly involves this dickhead, essentially. So what the investors are essentially saying is that there's some underhanded tactics no. uh, in the UFC merging or TKO um, buying out the WWE, essentially because Vince McMahon is still in power or at least in a in a position of power if you will am i shocked about this hell no i mean it's like i knew as soon as they we all knew as soon as they announced that damn deal like there there had to be some catch to it uh now granted he hasn't been involved with creative but he's still a major part of the company 2024 can can this old miserable bastard just go away just shoot go 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 away fence we're done with you 
you did what you did, but just get the fuck out of here. I don't, I don't want to talk about him anymore. But we'll have to wait and see what happens with this lawsuit. I'm sure there'll be some sort of settlement or something out of court, but time will tell on that. And also, speaking of the WWE, uh, this week it was also announced that there was a multitude of layoffs. Uh, now, all of these stemming from the corporate offices of the WWE. Um, it's unfortunate anytime anybody has to lose their job. Um, I mean, right now on paper, WWE is firing on all cylinders. It could be a scenario where they're just eliminating positions because, I mean, that does happen, you know, with the corporate merger and they've already done layoffs. It could be they're reevaluating and there's positions they don't need anymore. I mean, who knows? It, it's life. It is what it is. But, um, you know, we here at PW60 want to wish all of them, the gals, guys that were laid off from the WWE, and hopefully they will land back on their feet soon. And also, speaking of the WWE, looks like Monday Night Raw is coming closer and closer to finding a new home. But where could that be? Well, there are some rumors that have uh, been out there for some front runners. Uh, FX is one of those um, that has appeared to be a front runner, as well as Amazon. But to me, the most interesting one and the most challenging one and the most like, I really hope that's not the case. It appears like Turner Broadcasting Network, or uh, essentially uh, Warner Brothers Discover, I should say, is a candidate to host land Monday Night Raw. And what would happen to AEW at that point? I mean, that's the big question right there. So, um, I don't know. Everything here is a rumor, but it does appear like they, they anticipate to have a deal in place uh, within the next couple weeks. So, it'll be interesting to see where Monday Night Raw lands, because especially off of the USA Network, it's just crazy to think. Now, this week on AEW, let's talk about Dynamite. Of course, heavy with the Continental Classic still going on, as we saw three tremendous matchups from the Continental Classic. Of course, John Moxley going one-on-one -on -one against Jay Lethal. We also got to see uh, the main event was incredible with Jay White and Swerve Strickland. We'll talk about that here in a bit. And then we got to see Mark Briscoe go up against Roosh. Uh, but some incredible moments on Dynamite, nonetheless. Uh, let's talk about that MJF promo, man. Coming out, and then, of course, the Masked Men showing up to jump in, but Samoa Joe was right there, and they did lay it out. Next week, we're going to get Samoa Joe and MJF in tag action going against two of those Masked Men. So for the first time, uh, this group, whoever it is, these mysterious mysterious individuals are going to be action and it's going to be on AEW Dynamite. Julia Hart was also in action too as she defended her TBS championship in, against Emmy Sakura in a house rules matchup where her submission was banned. However, Emily, Julia Hart would pull out the win and retain her championship. And what a moment with Christian and Adam Copeland where it was set up. Next week on Dynamite, it is going to be Christian against Adam Copeland for the TNT Championship from Montreal, Quebec. I'm surprised we're getting it on television. I feel like there, there is going to be some tomfoolery or something's going to happen and it's going to lead to like a world's end matchup between them. But nonetheless, this dream matchup that we've been waiting to see, and I, I forget what the statistic is, but I think it's literally been almost maybe even longer than this, like 20 years since they've actually met one-on-one -on -one in the ring, which is crazy to think. Uh, and also, too, we got to talk about the censors kind of having a bad night. <laughs> as it's uh, Mr. Q there by a mile as uh, Adam Copeland returned the favor to Christian from months ago of, of pretty much telling him to go fuck himself, so... That was fun to see on live television. And then like 30 seconds later, you get a beep. But it is what it is. Also, it was a big night as we got to see a matchup between the Hardy Boys and Brother Say a go up against Action Andretti. And top flight and a returning Dante Martin. Dante Martin back in the ring from that gruesome injury he suffered earlier this year. 
He looked phenomenal, and it's great to see him back in the ring. Mr. B-Roll, I know, was was marking out for it. And, hey, because of that, Dante Martin is our wrestler of the week here on PW60. It's great to see this young man back in the ring. Looked like he hasn't lost a step. But I mentioned earlier that main event of Dynamite, that matchup between Swerve Strickland and Jay White, it was incredible. The back and forth was phenomenal. I would say, um, by far, maybe the best matchup so far of the Continental Classic Tournament. And they just keep spitting out incredible matches each week. But Jay White versus Swerve Strickland had to be our match of the week here on PW60. Like I say, this was an awesome, awesome matchup. Then, finally on AEW Dynamite this week, we got to mention this. One timeless Tony Storm. She has some controversial things to say because she apparently has a touch of the gout. I think you know where I'm going with this, folks. Let's go to the best gout machine. Well, well, well. Someone got a touch of the gout? <laughs> you wish, madam. I didn't touch you. And I will not stand here and be accused of touching one Tony Storm. Sure, you may have been touched by gout. But you weren't touched by the best gout. The best gout out there. I appreciate, you know, the name dropping and all that. You gotta make yourself famous one way or another. And why not talk about BGM? Because once again, I didn't touch you. You know who else I did not touch? Shania Twain! But I get the accusations that you think I would touch you, but I didn't touch you. I didn't touch Shania Twain. Sure, I've done things in the past. I may have touched a few farm animals. But you know what? I've changed. Wait, let me, let me, hold on, hold on. Let me check my script real quickly. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me change the scenery. Move it, bub. We both need money. You see, I've changed. I'm home. I, I'm where I always belonged. And I really need money. And what else to say here? And if you think that I don't have any passion for what I'm doing, boy howdy, let me tell you, every word that comes out of my mouth, every breath is the truth. Every breath is minty, thanks to double mint gum. That's a statement of a great mint with double mint gum. Double your pleasure, double your fun. Double mint gum. Please give me money. I spent all of my money. AJ Lee is bleeding me dry and I am a total hypocrite. Okay, 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 I admit it. I touched Luther. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Okay, best gout. You, you've done it again. Uh, a little creepy there for a split second. But anyways, nonetheless, you heard the man. He didn't touch Tony Storm. Now, Luther, that's another story. Well, also this week on AEW television, we got to see Rampage Friday night. And we got to see a return, in-ring return of the very nice and very evil Dan Housen as he was teaming up with his best friend, brethren. Orange Cassidy, uh, Trent Beretta, and Hook. I guess you could say Hook's part of the best friends. Anyways, as they went one-on-one -on -one against Daddy Magic, Cool Hand Ange, and the Dark Order, I got to see a fun trios matchup with Soraya and Ruby Soho, the outcast teaming up with Anna J, as they went up against the team of Karshita, Sky Blue, and Chris Statlander. And we also got to see the uh, quote-unquote Gates of Agony in action. Uh, with Brian Cage. Well, or not the Gates of Agony, I'm sorry, the Work Horseman, that is. Gates of Agony are over in New Japan, part of the World Tag League. Uh, anyways, they went up against Penta El Ciro, Miro, Commander, and El Hio del Viking. But the big story coming out of Rampage was the in ring promo from Sting and Ric Flair, mainly Ric Flair, just being Ric Flair, man. A lot of people pissed off about this because Ric Flair is inviting. Uh, some younger ladies back to his hotel room uh, with, and of course, like with all the, you know, Rick's past and stuff. But here's the thing. I mean, Rick has been cutting those damn promos for years, folks. I mean, 
if you if you love them now and now you hate them, I mean, come on. I mean, I I get it, you know, the especially in the day and age we're in, but I mean, it's just Ric Flair being Ric Flair's way I look at. I mean, it's just a damn promo. Uh, but Rick did end up saying like if he if if it felt like he was embarrassed to Tony Khan that he would in fact like you know leave and step down. I I think the big thing is is I think because it's Rick. And he just has this insatiable appetite for like just being out there in the wrestling ring and stuff. I, I think people are concerned he's going to try to get in the ring. I, that's what I feel like the heart of this disdain is. Uh, the, I won't even say disdain, just the the um, people being upset about. It. Like I say, I truly don't think it's that huge of a deal as far as the promo. But I don't anticipate seeing Ric Flair get back in a ring. I mean, it's just, at this point, it's no disrespect to the Nature Boy, but just be absolutely ludicrous if it happened. Like, the role he's in is fine, and let's just stick with that. But Nonetheless, uh, the Nature Boy is going to be by Sting's side the rest of the way as we head towards uh, Revolution in 2024. Now let's talk about Collision on Saturday night as the Continental Classic continued. And Andrade El Idolo and Brian Danielson would get on the board uh, as they would uh, take on Eddie Kingston and Daniel Garcia, respectively. Also, Claudio Castanelli going up against Brody Queen. Can we talk about that giant swing? Holy crap, man. That was nuts, dude. Uh, and then we got to see Abaddon in action against Kira Ogan. How about the whole tease of Abaddon going up against Julia Hart? Now, that's a compelling matchup. I'm here for it. Uh, also, we got to see Christopher Daniels and Matt Seidel team up against the House of Black. Uh, in addition to that, we did get to see the Kingdom was in uh, tag action going up against the Iron Savages. Uh, and how about El Hio Del Fikino against Kip Saban? But let's talk about the main event on this one, the Eddie kingston Brian Danielson matchup, which was a fun matchup. Brian Danielson picking up the win against Eddie Kingston. And like we say, he's officially on the board here now as part of the Continental Classic with two points. Look at this, though. Eddie, Eddie is a bomb, man. That's just like that, 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 that's, that hurts. That hurts. And I tell you, Eddie Kingston's back is up against the wall because we start off this tournament already with two losses. So uh, he's going to have to pick up some wins here if he's going to somehow be in the running to retain his ring of honor and New Japan Strong World Championship. But uh, nonetheless, the Continental Classic is heavily underway. And let's give you a little bit of an update here on the on the standings now. Uh, it does, uh, with Brody King picked up the win against Claudio Castanoli on a collision. So he is actually the front runner in the Blue League as he is up six points. Now, immediately after him is Claudio Castanoli with three points, followed by Brian Danielson. Andrade El Idolo all with three points. And Eddie Kingston and Daniel Garcia are not on the board yet as they have zero points. Uh, but Brody Kring already starting off uh, to jumpstart there. And I can say I'm here for it. I'm happy to see him uh, get a couple of wins. And Brody King, I mean, what more can we say about Brody King? He is, he is one of the most awesome guys to watch. One of the best big man going today. Now, over in the Gold League, John Moxley currently is tied with Swerve Strickland for the lead as they both have amassed six points as they are undefeated so far. Now, Jay White uh, follows them with three points as he did pick up that loss to Swerve Strickland this week. And followed by Roosh, who went on, who got on the board this week with his win over Mark Briscoe with three points. And uh, rounding out the Gold League, we have Mark Briscoe and Jay Lethal, who both have zero points. But we still got plenty more to come here on the Continental Classic, uh, but so far, man, it's 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 produced some awesome matches and moments, and it's going to continue to do so as the weeks progress. Well, this week on Dynamite, we also found out it's official. We got a date. We got a venue for AEW Revolution. It will take place on Sunday, March the third. And how Appa Pro is this? It's going to take place in the world famous. Greensboro Coliseum. I am so excited and pumped for this. I think it's just, I, I had a feeling when they were announcing Sting's last matchup, I felt like the Carolinas would be a good choice for it. And boy, oh boy, it's going to happen in one of the most 
world renowned wrestling buildings. Uh, this, I'm so pumped for this. Like, words can't express how excited I am that this is going to be at the Green Squirrel Calls. We got to talk about this from this weekend. Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, putting out a controversial tweet this week. As you can see here, she lays it out, folks. She, she ain't talking lies. MJF got a promo time of seven minutes. Now, this is live promo. This isn't pre tape Christian Cage got 10 minutes. All of 2023, Britt Baker has received zero minutes. Now, my understanding with Britt is she has been out with a little bit of an injury, a back injury. She's trying to heal up. But still, what, like I say, she's not telling lies. I mean, she's not getting any live, like, in-ring promo time. It's like, it's nuts to think about that for this year. Uh, or at least on dynamite, let's put it that way. I just, you shake your head. She's one of the best women's wrestlers. I truly hope, I'm, and like I say, I'm calling my shot now. I truly hope this is leading to her being the one that is the devil behind all of this that's going on. It makes perfect sense. Proof's in the pudding right here. This is another little snippet, I think, of that story. I'm hoping, anyways. But. Who knows? But nonetheless, like I say, she's she she's very valid in what she's saying here because she should be on TV a hell of a lot more and should have that mic because she's a hell of a promo for crying out loud. So you just shake your head and you wonder why. Also this week, this was interesting. We found out who were some members of the disciplinary committee uh, that did lead to CM Punk being let go from AEW. Come to find out, there the one wrestler who was on this committee was in fact Brian Danielson. So Brian Danielson uh, was one of the deciding factors, but uh, which I can imagine had to be one of the hardest decisions he's ever had to make. But like, is one of those things, and I forget what the exact quote he was that he said, but it was just like you got. It was essentially just like this is a double-edged sword. It's like you got to do what's best for the company. And, I mean, that's ultimately what they did. And I think it's going to work out for both parties, ultimately, at the end of the day. So, uh, somebody pointed out something this week I thought was interesting for, like, Punk to actually go back to AEW, or go back into the world of wrestling. Like, AEW had to happen for him to end up going back to the WWE. Sorry, I'm getting my, get tongue-tied, if you will. But, nonetheless, like, and that makes sense if you think about it. Like, his love for wrestling was kind of reborn, um. Maybe it was third to AEW. Maybe it was other things. Who knows? But, I mean, he went to AEW first. So, it's unfortunate it didn't work out. But, it's like that old saying goes, folks, everything happens for a reason. Well, folks, I think it's time to spice things up a little bit here on PW60. Let's go to Spicy Guac with a spicy take. Spicy Guac here, letting you know you need to support your local independent wrestlers. Go to their shows, even if it's only 10 other people there. Pay the 10 bucks or 20 doesn't matter go make some friends i would say touch some grass but everything is freezing especially since cm punk is back in the wwe it is colder than usual and nobody likes it but even cm punk had to perform at those you know 10 person shows just just go go like wrestling damn straight couldn't say it better myself just like wrestling folks well hey let's talk about nxt from this past tuesday night and we got to see the family in action defending their tag team titles up against uh, Humberto and Angel uh, as they would retain those championships. We got to see Braun Breaker qualify against Eddie Thorpe for the Iron Survival matchup. Uh, Elio Dragunov was in action in an explosive matchup with Nathan Frazier. But what I really want to talk about here is how about that matchup, that four-way matchup with former North American title holders going at it. And Wesley did end up winning. And he is now your number one contender. We'll meet Dominic Mysterio coming up here at the uh, NXT pay-per-view. Because I'm not going to say premium live event uh, deadline. So that'll be coming up here. Uh, actually, I believe that's this Saturday. Um, or maybe it's another Saturday. Ah, I lose track of my dates. But anyways, that's coming up very, very soon on the horizon here. But to me, the big story of NXT this past Tuesday night, we got to talk about it. Chase University addressing these allegations. This is so sad, folks. It has come out 
that yes, there was some gambling involved in Chase U. It's just a shame because it's it's such a great university, man. It, it is it's a hard pill to swallow, but uh, I don't know. It, it, it the, the rumors are true. It's just it's a sad day for Chase U and a sad day for the world of pro wrestling. But nonetheless, hopefully Chase U will be able to recover from this. Speaking of NXT, <laughs> it was announced that their next event. Vengeance Day will be coming up on February the 4th from Clarksville, Tennessee, uh, which uh, isn't too far from our good friend Jay, I believe. So, hey, maybe making a road trip to check this out, too. But that's coming up on February the 4th of next year. You can see Vengeance Day. And, hey, this week in the world of wrestling, we it was like baby fever, let me tell you, as Alexa Bliss welcomed her new baby girl into the world. Uh, but you know what? She wasn't the only one. As also, Ty Conte and Sammy Guevara announced the birth of their child. And in addition to that, former WWE star Riddle, his girlfriend, would actually give birth uh, to a baby as well. Like I say, man, baby fever just hit the world of pro wrestling this week. Well, I got some injury updates for you here. Now, first, we want to talk about MJF. We've been kind of monitoring this as, uh, here on PW60. And currently, he's dealing with two significant injuries. He's got a torn labrum and a dislocated hip. Now, the hip, we understand, it's, it's slowly starting to get better, but still very sore. But MJF has opted out to not get surgery to fix either of these injuries, and he's actually doing some stem cell therapy and rehab. Uh, as he prepares for his title defense against Samoa Joe. Because if he did opt for the surgery on the labrum, uh, he would be out for a couple months. So uh, I hope, I hope that's like he's making the wise decision there. Because, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, our scumbag being healthy is what's most important. So, But nonetheless, uh, MJF is on the road to World's End where he's going to meet Samoa Joe and defend his AEW World Championship. And also, we did get an update this week. This was interesting. We found out uh, Serena Deeb would put out a uh, video on her Instagram, essentially addressing her absence from television. Uh, and what we did is we come to find out she had actually suffered from three unprovoked seizures uh, that pretty much affected not only like her in-ring career, but just her, her overall lifestyle. Um, now the cause of the seizures were, went pretty much undetermined for a significant period of time. However, it does appear that they have found the fault behind those said seizures. And it looks like she'll be making a return to the ring here very, very soon, which is great news to hear. It's great to hear that she is doing uh, better and glad that she's healthy. Now, also this week we found out Bandito, um, would give us an update kind of on his injuries he's been dealing with. And unfortunately, it does sound like he's still dealing with some issues with his wrist. Uh, but he pretty much, he's got to essentially have surgery is what it's going to be. Uh, now, he can do it with some like kind of physiotherapy and kind of just see what happens with his wrist. But it does look like he's going to be probably have some surgery and be out for a significant period of time. But we wish him well here at PW60. And we hope we get to see him in the ring very, very soon. This. Now, this I want to talk about, folks. I was. I, this is literally probably every year is my favorite episode of Impact Wrestling that they put on. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, about every, around November-ish, december -ish, they always put out a throwback kind of like episode to yesteryear. It's the... Uh, IPWF or the Impact Professional Wrestling Federation, but essentially they just they do this homage to like '80s wrestling. It's freaking awesome. If you've never seen one of these episodes, you seriously got to do yourself a favor and check it out. Uh, of course, you see a lot of your favorite Impact wrestlers kind of in, in different gimmicks, personas. It's freaking hilarious. Uh, for example, you got 
rapid delivery Pete over there, <laughs> uh, aka Rich Swan, and he was in action against Kamikaze. Um, also, you got to see the finals of a tournament that they were having uh, with uh, one Tim Burr. Let's see what we did there, Josh Alexander, uh, going up against uh, Boris Alexa. The Russian, aka Santina Morale. And hey, it was great to see Santina Morale in the ring, too, man. He was looking awesome. But, dude, these shows that they put on, oh my gosh, they're so fun to watch. Like, seriously, do yourself a favor. Go back and watch the replay however you can, over that's on Impact, YouTube, whatever. Uh, but it's freaking awesome, man. Now, this week, the debut episode of Being the Dark Order debuted as uh, the Dark Order has uh, uh, essentially purchased the rights for Being the Elite. Wink, wink. Uh, and I always, me personally, I thought the Dark Order was like the best part of uh, BTE. I thought that for a long time. Uh, and this, this week's episode was pretty fun. I mean, I think they're just kind of dipping their toes in the water, so to speak. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where they go from here. But every Monday, you can tune in on YouTube and you can see Being the Dark Order. Now, this was an interesting tidbit to come out this week from AEW as QT Marshall uh, has announced his resignation from the company. Now, it's interesting to note, like, what he noted as, like, reasoning behind it is he felt like AEW was going more towards a New Japan style. Like, uh, haven't they been a New Japan style forever? I'm just saying. So, uh, I personally, I feel like kind of looking at the landscape of the world of pro wrestling, uh, there's going to be a lot of companies gunning for him as a producer slash talent. But I, I think MLW would be a perfect spot for him because they, they are kind of going through a transition with like backstage production and stuff. And it just seems like it'd be a good fit. And honestly, QT's been doing some of his best work in AAA, man. He's been killing it there. So it'd be interesting to see where one QT Marshall ends up landing. But I mean, this is gonna, this is actually a huge blow to AEW because there is a significant amount that QT did backstage as a producer. So, but it's like I say, it's gonna be interesting to see where he ends up landing. Now, this week we found out that Kota Ibushi would make a surprise appearance. In pro wrestling, Noah, and he would challenge a, now Muchi Marafuji for a matchup at the Destiny event uh, to kick off the new year for pro wrestling Noah. And this match is going to take place, dude. Already, I I'm pumped to see this. Um, I feel like they've probably met before, but I just I can't recall it. But man, this is this is going to be a dope ass matchup to say the least. And speaking of talent showing up in uh, indie wrestling or all across the landscape, we had the Grizzled Young Veterans would make their wrestling revolver debut. And this is another interesting piece of information. How about this? The former Maximum Male Models will be appearing at Effie's Big Gay Brunch in Tampa. That'll be going on Royal Rumble weekend. That is exciting. Can't wait to see those guys. That's be a perfect fit for that GCW show. And speaking of GCW, the Come On Dude event took place uh, this past week, Saturday in Connecticut. It was a solid show. I love Sawyer Rex matchup uh, against Jimmy Lloyd. was fun, man. And speaking of Jimmy Lloyd, uh, he is going to be in action at the GCW What Is Your Choice against uh, one Matt Cardona. Uh, with Matt Cardona's GCW career on the line. Now, at the time of the recording of this PW60 episode, that event hasn't occurred, but I'm sure we'll be covering it next week here on PW60. But so much going on in the world of independent wrestling. Speaking of which, let's go to our boy Michael with an independent wrestling report. What up, y'all? It's boy Michael with another pro wrestling, independent pro wrestling report. Uh, first off, we have uh, Gulf State Wrestling. Presents New Year's Revolution, January 6th at the City Park Rec in New Al Iberia, Louisiana. Uh, for tickets, call 985-312-9388 or 985-397-1596. Uh, secondly, we have Prestige Wrestling. Presents Rosalie and Seven, January 5th 
at the Roseland Theater in Portland, Oregon. For tickets to that event, prestigewrestling.net. Uh, lastly, we have Tomahawk Pro Wrestling for since New Year's Brawl 3, January 6th at the Pitzer Garrison Civic Center at 601 North 2nd Street in Lufkin, Texas, 75901. Uh, gates for that open at 545 Bow time at 7 p.m. Uh, go to the Tomahawk Pro Wrestling uh, Facebook page for more info on tickets. Well, there you have it. Check out some of those awesome independent wrestling shows. And hey, this week we said Raw was in Nashville. Just so happened to be the former TNA wrestling operator herself, one Dixie Carter. She was actually backstage. Uh, here you can see a picture of her with Cody and Nick Aldis. It's just like so, so weird to think of her like at the WWE show considering she was like the owner for Impact Wrestling for so many years of TNA Wrestling. But uh, nonetheless, she's got a solid relationship um, with a lot of the talent, as you can see here, once again, with like Cody and Nick. But uh, cool, cool for her, man. It's cool. Like she can kind of still be part of the wrestling world, but not be like, controlling member of it so i never really had a huge problem with her but anyways that's another story for another time and boy oh boy this was just like completely out of the blue chris jericho showed up at the sixth anniversary show for vietnamese pro wrestling and vietnam it's like what like okay just a surprise just random like hey i'm here guys uh a little bit of a backstory on this is jericho actually did cover Vietnamese pro wrestling and their history uh, several months ago on an episode of Talk is Jericho. So um, I guess that's kind of like the correlation if you wanted to connect these dots, so to speak. But interestingly enough, nonetheless, Chris Jericho just randomly showing up at an independent wrestling show in Vietnam. I don't think it gets any more random, randomer than that. Or does it? Let's go to Brian with Brian's random moment of the week. Hit the bricks. No, not really. Need you to stick around. Hi, Brian again with Brian's Random Moment of the Week. Don't forget you can follow myself and all the other PW60 content creators on all the platforms, TikTok, and so much more. And, of course, look for me at Brian's House of Random because I'm not wearing the hat at the moment. Uh, so here we go. Going to continue the series now that I've been doing for the last several weeks about your ultimate version of pro wrestling factions in history where you make your adjustments because I want to see your creative side and what you have to say about it. So last week we looked at the Nexus and taking seven total members between the original and the new Nexus, you can mix and match however you wanted to. One of those members from the new Nexus, of course, was Husky Harris, who would then thankfully reinvent himself into the eater of worlds, Bray why so we transition into that today and i want to know your ultimate version of the wyatt family you might be saying well brian what what was there especially when you had stroman added to the mix with a four-man group is the ultimate version but here's what i want to do go five members total you can keep all four that were there and add somebody else from wwe from within nxt from another company from that same time range, that's perfectly fine. Or if you really want to get creative, you can say, take Strowman out, add two other people, or however you want to do it. Of course, keep Bray as the obvious, you know, by default, he's one of the ones that stays because it's, you know, his family. So I want to see the creativity percolating from your brains onto the keyboards to typing your answers in the comments section below. So give me your ultimate five members. We're going to expand it ultimate five of the Wyatt family. Yeah. Try to find a fancy way to end. Just look at the bricks. Not this face, the bricks. Oh, Brian, we love you, brother. And we also love our WrestleTalk content creators. And this week, our Ruby Ringside content creator of the week is one not that Tom Green. I got to tell you, I've been following this guy here recently, and I'm loving the content he's putting out. He puts out some great information about on like WCW and just things from the past that you not even I really was thinking about of WCW. He does some great coverage on that, as well as, as he has some other fun 
interesting videos and he streams every tuesday on twitch so if you're not doing so follow not that tom green because he's our ruby ringside content creator of the week now also we got some rumblings going on what is mercedes monet's future going to be now me personally i think she's going to stay in new japan or at least kind of stay with like I don't think she's going back to WWE right away. Does she do it eventually? Sure. But I think there's still some unfinished business for her. But a lot of people are thinking she may be going back to the WWE. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. Also, it was announced this week that Lou Fista is going to start up her own wrestling company called the Women's Wrestling Syndicate. Syndicate uh, is a women's wrestling company by women's wrestling. So I'm all for it, man. The more women's promotions we have in the in the United States, as far as like in all of the world, I, I think that's great. So I'll be excited to see what's going to come from this. And this week, we also found out at final battle, Athena will defend her Ring of Honor Women's Championship against one Billy Starks. I'm telling you, folks, this is probably one of the best feuds going today that nobody's talking about. And unfortunate, it's unfortunate because I mean it is on Ring of Honor and people aren't watching Ring of Honor as much, but they just put out, I believe, on YouTube, a, a, like a like a culmination of like how, what's led to this rivalry. It's like a, I think it's maybe two hours or something. But do yourself a favor if you can, check it out or like check out the bullet points of it because I'm telling you, man, this is like one of the best feuds going, and this should main event final battle in my opinion. I'm pumped for this. I want to see this, and I personally hope Billy Starks ends up winning this. Shout out to my fellow Hoosier because uh, she's had an awesome awesome year so far and athena my god athena is like the mvp of ring athena is like one of the had one of the best years and once again she it's just something that nobody's talking about it's unfortunate but she is killing it right now ring of honor also this week the wwe had presence at the big 12 championship game as you can see here the undertaker along with sheamus jake cargill drew mcintyre michelle mccool and samantha uh from uh, monday night raw as you can see, they were all present for this. And finally, it was announced that StarCast is going to be going to Australia. That's right. Ballarat, Victoria, on April 10th to the 15th, will be the next StarCast event, um, which I thought it would be tied in kind of with Elimination Chamber. I don't know if there's some other wrestling show going on around then, but it's still cool that the land down under is getting a StarCast. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode of Pro Wrestling 60. We thank you for joining us here. And like I say, we want to wish our friend b -roll well. And I'm sure he'll be back with us here on another episode of Pro Wrestling 60. Well, folks, I'm sure it's going to be another amazing week here in the world of pro wrestling. Until next time, we'll see you then. Everybody have a great and awesome week.